Hello everyone, welcome once again to our session for today. Uh, we are going to discuss the new topic, derivative of hyperbolic and inverse hypo hyperbolic functions. So these are the objectives of our lecture for today. So at the end of the period, uh, you should be able to determine the derivative of hyperbolic functions and the other one is to determine the derivative of inverse hyperbolic functions right so but before we go into details of finding the derivative of hyperbolic and inverse hyperbolic functions uh, just allow me to give you some brief introduction about this topic hyperbolic functions and inverse hyperbolic functions or what this hyperbolic functions uh, is all about okay so when we speak of hyperbolic functions so these are the or this is the basic introduction about this topic hyperbolic functions arise quite naturally from simple combination of the exponential function uh, example a function that is explored thoroughly in school mathematics indeed the two main functions the hyperbolic cosine and the hyperbolic sine are just half of the sum and difference of e to the x and e to the minus x namely so we have here the formula uh, cosine hyperbolic h here stands for hyperbolic so cosine hyperbolic of x or hyperbolic cosine of x equal to e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2 the, sine, the hyperbolic sine of x is equal to e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by 2. Okay, so this is what is meant by this uh, statement here, this paragraph. Okay. In mathematics, the hyperbolic functions are analogs of the ordinary trigonometric functions or circular functions. So the basic hyperbolic functions are the hyperbolic sine or we write it at sin h and the hyperbolic cosine cos from which are derived the hyperbolic tangent which is tan h etc now in anal analogy to the derived trigonometric functions so the inverse functions are the inverse hyperbolic sine or we write we can write it as r sin h also called arc sin h or high uh, arc uh, hyperbolic sine or e sin h so these are the different notation of this uh, inverse hyperbolic sine and so on and so forth Now, if you look at the illustrations here, so these are the relationship no, of the hyperbolic and circular functions. So on the right side uh, illustration, so we have here a circle. So this is what you call unit circles. When you speak of unit circle, the radius of this circle is 1. And it's from this equation, it says that the center of this circle is at the origin okay and it is a radius one all right so we have here u which is the angle uh, the uh, u is twice the area of sector aop so sector aop is the one shaded this is a o p all right and uh, using this uh, area here which is u so the coordinates of this point P uh, on this circle is given by this 
cosine u, sine u. So this is what you call the polar coordinates at this point. Okay? So at this point here, the angle u is equal to 0 at this point here. Meaning the intersection of the x-axis and the circle, uh, the angle here is equal to 0. Okay? Now, on the left side, so we have here the hyperbola. Okay, if you can still remember from our analytic geometry. So, similarly, we have here the angle at this point here, uh, the intersection between the x-axis and this uh, hyperbola. So, the angle here is equal to 0. And the uh, coordinates of this point, uh, represented by P, it has these uh, coordinates. So it is a uh, hyperbolic uh, coordinates for this point. We have the cosine h or hyperbolic cosine u and the hyperbolic sine u. So this is uh, the representation of this coordinate at this point. And similar to our discussion in analytic geometry, so we have here uh, and as the asymptote you know, so asymptote passing through the origin all right so when you speak of asymptote that is the line uh, in which the hyperbola getting closer and closer but will never touch okay so again uh, in this particular area here the angle here okay the angle with respect to uh, from this point to that uh, point P so this is the angle here which is twice also the area of a sector AOP. So this sector AOP. Okay, so this is the relationship between the hyperbolic and circular functions. So just as the points with coordinates cosine t, sine t define a circle. So the points cosine or hyperbolic cosine h, or sorry, uh, hyperbolic cosine t and hyperbolic sine t define the right half of the equilateral hyperbola. So equilateral hyperbola is something like this, uh, shown in this illustration. So the hyperbolic functions take real values for real argument. We called it uh, hyperbolic angle. In our illustration, we called it u. Okay, so this is the u here. That is what we call the argument called a hyperbolic angle. In complex analysis, they are simply rational functions of exponentials. All right. Uh, the difference between circular and hyperbolic functions in their graphs, so circular functions are periodic and the hyperbolic functions are not. So that's the differences. So we have here another illustration that shows us the uh, relationship between the hyperbolic functions and the uh, trigonometric functions. So if you look at this uh, graph, or this curve here represented by this black color, so this is actually the graph of the uh, sine function, the trigonometric sine function. And if you look at this red color, so this is the graph of the hyperbolic sine. Okay, so at least you have an idea of the uh, nature or the characteristic of the hyperbolic sine with respect to the trigonometric function sine. So we can also compare cosine hyperbolic sorry we can also compare cosine and the hyperbolic cosine uh, shown in this illustration. So the cosine function is represented by this, if you can still remember from your trigonometry, 
So this is the representation of the function, which is a cosine function. And the hyperbolic cosine function is shown in this illustration, the red color. Okay, so just be familiarized class with this uh, graphs of cosine and hyperbolic cosine functions. So finally, we can compare tangent x and the hyperbolic tangent x from this illustration. So tangent x, the trigonomet trigonometric function uh, graph looks like this. Okay, it's just like a standing wave. And we have here the hyperbolic tangent. So it looks uh, uh, similar, but the orientations are different. Okay, so at least you're familiar with this uh, graph. No? At least when you're asked to graph the uh, hyperbolic functions and the uh, tangent, no? tangent function, you have an idea of its uh, curves. We can also use graphs to examine the connection between the hyperbolic and exponential functions. So I hope you can still remember our discussion on exponential functions. That's why we have some uh, statement that, oh, it's rise uh, exponentially. So we know what we mean by exponentially. So it is taken from the word exponential functions. So the definition of the hyperbolic functions use the uh, exponential function as you can see here. So this graph, uh, we know that uh, this is uh, an example of exponential. If you, if you take one of this uh, pink or red color, well, I think this is pink. So this, uh, this takes the form of the exponential graph, right? So similar to exponential. But in terms of, in terms of uh, hyperbolic, so this graph here represents the sum, or sorry, the difference of the hyper, hyperbolic cosine x and the hyperbolic sine x. So you see here, uh, it's the difference. No? Uh, if you look at the sign between uh, hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine, so minus no, the difference or meaning the, the middle sign of operation is negative. So the graph leans to the left, right? Uh, with respect to the exponential functions. And if you look at this other graph, this is the sum of hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine function. And it leans to uh, the right, but still this looks like the exponential function. Okay? And uh, going back to the graph of the cosine hyperbolic function or hyperbolic cosine function, so it looks like this. And if you look at the the sine, the, the hyperbolic sine of x. So it looks like this. Now, if you are going to add or subtract uh, the two functions, it will look like this. So if you subtract, so this is how to see the, uh, the graph class. First, you have this cosine hyperbolic function. Okay, and then we have the, here the hyperbolic sine function. Now, if you are going to add the two functions, so it the result will be like this. Okay, and if you are going to subtract uh, cosine by the sine, the, the hyperbolic cosine by the hyperbolic sine, and this will be the resulting graph. All right. So this supports the identities, well, the following identities. We have e to the x equal to cosine or hyperbolic cosine x plus hyperbolic sine x. Okay? So, if you can still remember, 
if you are going to graph this exponential exponential function it will be like this all right now in comparison to the hyperbolic functions so this is the sum no, this is just equivalent to the sum of the hyperbolic cosine of x and the hyperbolic sine of x and the other one so by the way we're referring to this graph okay this graph here uh, the other one we have e to, by, to the minus x e to the minus x if you're going to graph e to the minus x this one here uh, this will be the corresponding graph leaning to the left okay and this is equivalent to if you look at the uh, if you consider hyperbolic this is the difference of the hyperbolic sine x minus hyperbolic sine x no hyperbolic cosine x minus hyperbolic sine x so we are going to this is the uh, identities that we're going to use class when we uh, do the derivatives of the hyperbolic functions as well as its inverse hyperbolic functions later on and of course the definition so we have here the definition that uh, hyperbolic cosine x is just the one half no? one half of the sum so these are the two exponential functions so just one half of it no, one half because you have uh, this one you add by this one and divide by 2 so that will be the cosine hyperbolic functions which when you are going to see the graph it will be equivalent to this one okay so right because you're just adding this part here and this part here so this will look like this it follows this form and similarly for the hyperbolic sine function so this is just the difference okay difference uh, e to the minus e to the positive x minus e to the minus x divided by 2 so the difference half of the difference of these two functions okay so that's the equivalent so this is the corresponding graph of hyperbolic sine function Okay, so I hope you get the logic class of this uh, principle uh, shown in this graph and also the given um, expressions or equations. Hyperbolic and exponential functions. So if you look at these graphs here, so the this color, the pink, I think this is pink color. So this corresponds to the e to the minus x. Right, this is e to the minus x. All right, and if you look at this green, this is the e to the positive x. E to the positive x. And if you look at the blue one, so this is the hyperbolic cosine x. And if you look at this green and pink, if you if you are going to add, no, if you are going to add the two Fun exponential functions the e to the x and the e to the minus x so if you just consider this one add this with this so this will come up as the cosine hyperbolic functions or hyperbolic cosine function All right so that is the logic class uh, or the analogy of the relationship of the hyperbolic and exponential functions so I hope you have seen what I have seen in this graph. And also for sine, uh, again, we have this, uh, this blue color. This is uh, uh, sine hyperbolic functions or hyperbolic sine function. All right. And we have here the, uh, the green one. This is the e to the x for exponential function and this pink one this is a e to the minus x all right so uh, if you look at this this part here of the graph the upper part of the x axis right 
So this is e to the x, right? Uh, if you look at the green one and you compare it with the blue one, so it takes the same form, right? So this is uh, e to the x. It means that this green one plus uh, up to this point or even if you extend it up to here, so that is e to the x. Then this blue one, if you just stop up to here, it takes the form of exponential e to the x. And then if you look at the, if you continue from, from the origin, you just refer to the blue color. So you, you see here, it's still exponential but it's on opposite direction going down. So it means the exponent here, this takes the form of this one. So this one is just the, uh, if you're going to flip this one, it will take the form of this. So that's why we have e to the minus x. This one corresponds to the e to the minus x. Now if you're going to add the 2, if you're going to, sorry, if you're going to subtract, if you're going to subtract, so what will happen is, so you have uh, this part here, the upper part, all right? Then you have to minus or subtract with this part. So meaning e to the x minus e to the minus x, then divided by 2, that's equivalent to, this would be the sine or hyperbolic sine function. All right, so we are relating class the the expression or the equation of the hyperbolic functions in terms of the exponential functions into graphs. You know, to to give you the logic of understanding of uh, how these um, hyperbolic functions in relation to the exponential functions shown in the graph. Now we have uh, applications you know, application of the hyperbolic functions so we'll focus now our, our discussion the on this part hyperbolic functions so we have what we call catenary so especially for civil engineering students uh, you will always uh, be dealing with this word catenary so uh, i will explain you know uh, perhaps uh, with the principle that i'm going to show you in this uh, lecture you will understand what this catenary is all about Alright, so when you speak of catenary, so cable likes power lines or power line cables which hang freely, hang in curves called hyperbolic cosine curves. Right? So, for example, if you look at the transmission lines of Meralco, you know, the power uh, service provider, especially in, in Laguna or in some parts of of uh, the Philippines or in the Philippines so we have this uh, post that carry the transmission lines so if you look at the transmission lines from one one post to another uh, you cannot see that it's it's a straight line right it will curve so that's a situation that's uh, what we call catenary so catenary is cables like power line cables so it's hung freely, hung in curves, because it cannot be a straight line because of the weight of the cable. So it will bend, bend down. So the the bending down, the the shape that will be uh, formed will be a hyperbolic cosine curves. All right. So like in this illustration here. So in physics and geometry. A catenary is the curve that an idealized hanging chain or cable assumes under its own weight when supported only at its end. And the curve has a U-like shape, superficially similar in appearance to a parabola, but it is not a parabola. It is a scaled, rotated graph of the hyperbolic cosine okay the curve appears in the design of certain types of arcs 
and as a cross section of the catenoid so the shape as shown by a soap film bounded by two parallel circular rings so that is what we call catenoid in mathematics, the catenary is the shape of the hanging flexible chain or cable when supported at its end and acted upon by a uniform gravitational force and that is its own weight. So the chain is the steepest near the points of suspension because this part of the chain has the most weight pulling down on it. Why? Because all the weights no, from different segments going to that point, uh, when you add that, so that's too much no, from that uh, particular point, which is near uh, the points uh, near the suspension. So toward the bottom, the slope of the chain decreases because the chain is supporting less weight. So that's the reason. Uh, so if we have here the different values of uh, a so this is an illustration class of what this is what is mentioned here so if if the posts are very uh, close to each other uh, assuming that uh, this cable here have the same weight and if the posts are close to each other so you can expect that uh, the bending of this uh, cable will be something like this so that is for a equal to 0.5. So what is this a? So you will see that uh, later on. And if you are going to separate uh, farther, meaning the, the span between the two curves or the, between the two posts are, are longer compared to this black color here. So let's consider the blue one. So the, the resulting uh, curves that will be uh, created will be something like this. So that is that corresponds to a equal to 1. Okay, now if you for a equal to two, so a here class is the distance no, from from the origin going to the right and also from the origin going to the left. Now for a equal to two, so this is equivalent to 0 0.5, uh, one, uh, one point five, then two. Okay, so two. All right. So this will be something like this. So that is what is meant by this uh, explanation here. In physics and geometry, a catenary is the curve that an idealized hanging chain or cable assumes under its own weight when supported only at its end. So a hanging chain with short links forms a catenary. So something like this. So this is what we call catenary. So short links. So if you look at the links, it's very short. So that's why the sagging here is so much. But if you're going to to expand or if you have to extend the span, so the, the curve here will be something like this. The sagging would not be the same as this one. But because the links uh, are very short, so this is the resulting form of the Catenary. Freely hanging electric power cables, especially those used on electrified railways, can also form a catenary. Now something like this. So you have here the cables hanging. So it bends. No? We have here something like this. So form a catenary. In real life, you use the catenary shape to know how much cable to place between two poles in high power transmission line or transmission lines. So too much cable and it sags too much making it a hazard. Right? So that's why they have the correct measurement of the span between the two posts when I mean, they are using this catenary for transmission lines. So too little cable, what will happen? If too little cable, it will break because of the tension, no? the high tension. If our purpose is to make the sagging not much, then you use the lighter cable or little cable. 
So what will happen is that it will break. So as it stretches, if you're trying to make it straight you know, to avoid hazards, so the tendency is that it will break. So quite important to get it right when you have, for example, 768 kilovolt at 6,000 amperes through the cable. So this is very important, no? especially for electrical engineers or even uh, civil engineers because, uh, of course, uh, there will be a coordination between the civil engineers and also the, the electrical engineer no? when they are going to design uh, catenary for electricity purposes or transmission of electricity, especially for high tension, high voltage, high current uh, transmission lines. So the silk on a spider's weave forming multiple elastic catenaries as shown in this picture. You see? So these are catenaries, multiple catenaries. So you see here, even uh, the spider knows the mathematics. Uh, you will see later now why why uh, why the reason what's the reason why the uh, the catenary is very important in the design. So catenaries and related curves are used in architecture and engineering, right? So in the design of bridges and arcs, so that forces do not result in bending moments. Uh, we have a term here, bending moments. In your higher year, especially when you have already your uh, engineering mechanics, you will understand what does it mean, bending moments. So, catenaries, this is very important in architect architecture and engineering designs. So, because of this reason, uh, to avoid the result of bending moments. So, the Sheffield Winter Garden is enclosed by a series of catenary arcs. As you can see here, so this is a catenary arcs. Uh, actually, I haven't researched uh, where is this located, the Sheffield Winter Garden. But uh, perhaps if you enter this in your browser and search, uh, you can see the the better picture of this Sheffield Winter Garden class. So the gateway arc, uh, looking east is a flattened catenary so the gate arc in st louis missouri united states is sometimes said to be an inverted catenary but this is incorrect it is a close to a more general curve called flattened catenary with the question given by y equal to a cosine or a times hyperbolic cosine b times x which is a catenary if the product of E and B is equal to 1. So we call it flattened catenary. Okay, so the condition from this equation, the condition that this will become a catenary if the product of A and B, so this A here, E and B is equal to 1. So this is the illustration. Okay, this is what we call flattened catenary. This is the gateway arc in St. Louis in Missouri, uh, United States. Then we have cross section of the roof. Oh, the roof, the Kiliti Railway Station in Hungary, Budapest, Hungary. So you see here. So the railway station. So this takes the form of catenary. Then we have catenary bridges. In free hanging chain, the force exerted is uniform with respect to the length of the chain. And so the chain follows the catenary curve. So the same is true for, of a simple suspension bridge or catenary bridge. So another term for suspension bridge is catenary bridge, where the roadway follows the cable, or something like this. This is what we call the 
catenary bridge or suspension bridge so be familiar with this no? especially uh, in your class because you are all civil engineering so later on you will know how uh, you know how to calculate the the tension here the the compression force bending moments and so on and so forth in your engineering mechanics class so stressed ribbon bridges like this one in Maldano Maldano Uruguay also follows a catenary curve with cables embedded in a rigid deck okay so this is also a an example of catenary bridge catenaries are different values of a okay so different values of a we have a equal to 25 and a equal to 1 so for a equal to 0.5 okay so this is 1 2 3 4 so 0.5 at this point here and so on and so forth for a equal to 1 so this is the span span class is this one here so remember the word span this is common when you're solving problems that involves catenary so that is the distance from one po uh, one point to another uh, with respect to these curves so for this black okay so this is what we call the span for the blue this is what we call the span Okay, for the red or is it pink? Okay, this is what we call span. Right. Uh, and we have uh, MI, MIT. So get involved. A group led by Oxendorf studies buildings and sustainable structures based on the history of still standing designs. So we have here uh, a design here. Uh, this is done in, in MIT. Alright. So that's an example of a catenary. So this is uh, Dr. John Ochsendorf. So they start buildings uh, that uh, are sustainable. Uh, uh, that's why they're studying buildings that still stand after 500 years when it was built. Like this one. So we have here the bridge. This is uh, the basis for understanding both suspension bridge and masonry building and structures. So this is a 500 year old Inca bridge. So can you imagine 500 years still standing or still uh, looking good in this picture? So Inca bridge made completely a grass strung into cord. So when the Spanish came to South and Central America, they realized that there was no equivalent to this type of structure in Europe. So they were amazed no, how these uh, bridges were built. So this is one of Chindorf's group's uh, endeavor. So they studied the, this bridge. We have the King's College Chapel. So an image of the magnificent fan vaulting on the ceiling of King's College Chapel completed in 1515. Oh, it is a very old one, which spans 42 feet and hovers 84 feet above the pavement. Yet its constituent blocks are only 4 inches thick. Wow, it's amazing. So it's been standing for 500 years see here Can you imagine this is a very old building standing eh? still looks very good for 500 years so amazing so this used the uh, hyperbolic or the catenary uh, curves as uh, we have mentioned earlier we also have the gate uh, gateway arc the stainless steel gated arc in the shape of an inverted weighted catenary curve it spans 630 feet at ground level from outer edge to outer edge and is 630 feet high making it the tallest man-made monument in the u.s 
So this is designed by Euro Sarinin. Euro Sarin. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, what we call the inverted weighted catenary curve. Oh, it's amazing. Then we have what we call anchoring uh, marine objects. So the catenary produced by gravity provides an advantage to heavy anchor rods. An anchor rod or anchor line usually consists of chain or cable or both. Anchor rods are used by ships, uh, oil rigs, tacks, floating wind turbines, and other marine equipment which must be anchored to the seabed. You know, something like this, this illustration. Alright. Uh, we have what we call freely falling bodies. If air resistance is proportional to the square of velocity, we have this uh, equation, y equal to t ln of hyperbolic cosine bt. This is used for a freely falling bodies for this equation. So y is the distance. Okay, so y is the distance. Uh, the object falls in t seconds. Okay, so that is the vertical distance. So y is the distance the object fall in t seconds. A and b are constants. Then we have what we call matrix or so curve. So the word practice, uh, sorry, practice comes from the Latin tract tractus, which means to draw, pull, or tow. Our familiar word tractor comes from the same root. So an example of a real life situation that can be modeled by a tractrix equation is a semi truck turning a corner no, semi truck turning a corner as I will be shown uh, later no, in the next slide another example is a boat attached to a rope being pulled by a person walking along the shore other examples of uh, truck tricks curve include a heat seeking missile homing in on a moving airplane and a dog leaving the front porch and chasing person running on a on the sidewalk. So that what what is called truck tricks. So like in this uh, illustration here. So this is what we call semi truck. So this is the this is what we call truck tricks. Okay. So A here as shown in the uh, previous slide. Okay. So this is the length of this semi truck so another illustration is something like this for a boat somebody is uh, uh, pulling this boat using a rope all right so both of this situation and both of this, these situations and others can be modeled by this equation so y equal to a. So take note uh, what is a, right? Times the hyperbolic secant or hyperbolic inverse hyperbolic secant x over a minus square root of a squared minus x squared. Okay, so this is our x here. Our a. This is our a. Okay. So this is modeled using this so the height okay so you're seeing this then we have pendulum the pendulum oscillates so what does it mean oscillates so it will go back uh, back and forth no as it uh, swing back and forth if a pendulum oscillates near its stable equilibrium the equation of motion is given by x double prime equal to minus w 2x and the solution is any linear combination of 
sine wt and cosine wt where w here is equivalent to 2 pi f if the pendulum has a stiff arm rather than a string then there is a second unstable equilibrium where it's uh, straight up so this is like balancing a pencil on its tip so the equation of motion is given by x over prime equal to w2x and the solution is any linear combination of hyperbolic sine wt and hyperbolic cosine wt okay so these are the uh, important applications of this uh, hyperbolic functions class so for the definition so as mentioned oh, let's uh, summarize the definition of hyperbolic functions so as mentioned earlier that the uh, hyperbolic sine of x is just the difference of the two exponential e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by 2 or just half of the difference of these two exponential functions that is hyperbolic sine x for the hyperbolic cosine x this is the sum okay divided by two so for tangent uh, you just use the the same uh, concept now when we use when you do the uh, trigonometric functions you just divide sine divided by cosine that is tangent now we have for hyperbolic tangent x so that is hyperbolic sine x divided by the co hyperbolic cosine x so sorry uh, it should have x here okay equal to you just divide uh, here since you are dividing hyperbolic sine with a hyperbolic cosine uh, 2 and 2 will be uh, when you divide 2 by 2 so that becomes 1 so that's why you have no more 2 here all right so you have e to the minus x minus e to the sorry e to the positive x minus e to the minus x divided by e to the x plus e to the minus x so that is for hyperbolic tangent x and similarly for hyperbolic cotangent x so you just uh, do this first no? you put this in the numerator and then divide this this one at the denominator and you will have this for hyperbolic cotangent now for secant so we know that secant is just 1 over uh, cosine right in the trigonometric function so similarly in hyperbolic hyperbolic uh, secant function so hyperbolic secant x is equal to 1 over hyperbolic cosine x and which is equivalent to 2 divided by e to the because uh, this is 1 over you know uh, you know that this is equivalent to this one here so meaning 1 divided by this so using the rules of division and multiplication or rule of division of fraction so it will be like this similarly for cosecant hyperbolic cosecant x so this is 1 divided by uh, hyperbolic sine x so this is also 2 equivalent to 2 divided by e to the x minus e to the minus x Alright, so that's the definition for hyperbolic functions. These are the additional formulas that you need to remember class and memorize. Okay, and then we have the identities. So sometimes uh, in doing uh, differentiation, if you know the identities, uh, it will make your work simpler. So knows these uh, identities. So in trigonometric functions, the sum of the two the sum the square will become one but here in the hyperbolic functions this will be the square of the difference the hyper the square of the hyperbolic function of x minus the square of the hyperbolic function of a hyperbolic sine function sorry the first identity is uh, the square of the hyperbolic cosine x minus the square of the hyperbolic sine x is equal to 1 and we have here the double angle the hyperbolic sine 2x is equal to 
twice the product of hyperbolic sine x and hyperbolic cosine x. And uh, uh, cosine of or hyperbolic cosine of 2x is equal to the uh, square, the sum of the square of the hyperbolic cosine x and the square of the hyperbolic sine x. Alright, so these are uh, very important identities class that you can use to simplify your equation perhaps before you you begin uh, differ your differentiate differentiation or differentiating process. And in terms of derivatives, so like in the trigon trigonometric functions, you also have some formulas to remember you know, for your derivatives. When you're doing derivatives of hyperbolic functions so these are the formulas so remember huh, this is related to uh, trigonometric functions there's a little difference okay so we have here the derivative of hyperbolic cosine x is equal to sine or hyperbolic sine x and the derivative of hyperbolic sine x so the, the this symbol class it means uh, derivative meaning hyperbolic cosine x prime okay so this indicates derivative first derivative so for hyperbolic sine x the derivative of hyperbolic sine x is equal to hyperbolic cosine x and the Derivative of hyperbolic tangent x, tangent x is equal to uh, square of the hyperbolic secant x. Uh, by the way, because I need to check, huh, because uh, I think there will be one of them is negative here. But anyway, uh, I'll mention it in our... When we do the examples, I will mention it if this is where, where this uh, is negative because I'm not so sure if there is a missing sign here. But anyway, uh, let me double check it later no? and I'll uh, inform you in our next video. Then the derivative of hyperbolic cotangent x is equal to the negative of the square of the hyperbolic cosecant x. And the derivative of hyperbolic secant x is equal to the negative sec hyperbolic secant x times the hyperbolic tangent x. And the uh, derivative of hyperbolic cosecant x is equal to the negative of the hyperbolic cosecant x multiplied by the hyperbolic, hyperbolic cotangent x. Alright, so these are the formulas for the hyperbolic functions, the derivative of hyperbolic functions. So please memorize them and add them into your list of the formulas that you can easily or con conveniently refer to uh, in the future especially pag, uh, when you're going to have your board exam review class now for the inverse uh, derivative of inverse hyperbolic functions so we have here the derivative of inverse hyperbolic function of x or we can represent this as d over dx meaning d here uh, indicates derivative no? derivative of no? with respect to x meaning derivative of the hyperbolic sorry the derivative of the inverse the negative one here indicates inverse so the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic sine function with respect to x is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 plus x squared and the derivative of the uh, inverse hyperbolic cosine x with respect to x is equal to 1 divided by the square root of x squared minus 1 okay uh, I think the heading here should have uh, inverse huh? I'll, I'll change this class it should be to avoid confusion so I'll add here
inverse this should, this should be inverse here Similarly here, okay, so for the tangent, we have the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic tangent x with respect to x is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus x squared, and the derivative of the inverse or hyperbolic inverse hyperbolic cotangent x with respect to x is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus x squared so just the same right okay for uh, secant so the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic secant x with respect to x is equal to the negative 1 divided by x times square root of 1 minus x squared and the other one, the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic cosecant x with respect to x is equal to the negative of 1 divided by the absolute value of x. Meaning if the x is negative, so take the positive value of it, then multiply by the square root of x squared plus 1. Alright, so these are the formula class formulas that you need to... Uh, add to your list of the formulas okay so i will stop up to this part here if you want to know more about this topic you know, or you have here some references that you can that you may check you know, for some details all right so thank you very much and hope to see you again in our next video so i'll give you the example in a separate video class please because if i do it now it's very long okay so thank you very much uh, uh, see you again next time in our next video bye